Let's do a short IFR flight to look at a typical VOR approach and how it should be flown. We're starting out in Ridgely, Maryland, with routing to the Waterloo VOR en route to Delaware Coastal Air Park, which is about 15 miles from the actual coast, but anyways. We'll plan to fly the VOR approach to runway 4 at Delaware Coastal. One thing we know while doing our brief is that a DME is required, so if we assume we have the minimum required navigational equipment to do this approach, that'll include both a working VOR and DME. Now, we can overlay the approach plate on top of the en route chart we're using to improve situational awareness. The plan view contains a note that says that the procedure is not allowed for arrivals at Waterloo on Victor 308 eastbound or Victor 1 north eastbound. Those routes would run along these lines, but we're navigating direct to the VOR, so we're okay. As we approach Waterloo, we'll have a look at some of our instruments. We're at 3,000 feet on a 120 heading. To navigate direct to the VOR, we'll twist the OBS to turn the card until the needle centers with the 2 indication, showing us a 120 course will take us directly inbound to the station. One question that comes up a lot is if we should do a procedure turn at Waterloo. Yes, there is a racetrack pattern drawn there, but the dashed lines mean that this is a holding pattern. It's not a procedure turn or hold in lieu of procedure turn. Compare that with the solid line of the hold in lieu of procedure turn at WebEx at the bottom left of the plate. More on that later. Think of this instead as the beginning of a feeder route for the approach, as indicated by the thin arrow pointing along the 233 radial to WebEx, which is the intermediate fix for the approach. If we had GPS, the unit would plot a turn to allow us to fly by Waterloo and join the 233 radial outbound. With just the VOR though, we'll be flying inbound and watch for station passage when the needle deflects and the flag flips from to to from. At that point, we'll make a right turn to intercept the 233 radial. We'll use the 30 degree intercept, the 263 heading. We'll twist the VOR to the 233 radial. When the needle begins to center, we'll fly the 233 heading and track the needle to fly outbound. We can descend to 2100, the altitude depicted on the feeder route, once we're established outbound. At this point, we'll be watching our DME. When it reads 22.4, we'll have passed over WebEx. As we mentioned, there's a hold in lieu of procedure turn at WebEx. We're flying the opposite direction of the inbound leg, so we'll do a parallel entry. A teardrop entry would work fine as well if you prefer. We'll fly over WebEx, indicated by 22.4 on our DME, and time one minute outbound. After that minute, we'll make a right turn to intercept a 083 heading and twist to our inbound course of 053. We'll intercept the needle and fly 053. Once past Webex, we can descend to 2,000 feet, the next step down altitude. This isn't the only way we might get established on this approach. Let's say we're flying that same feeder route, but we're starting higher up. The max altitude is 6,000 feet, so if we're that high, we can use the hold in lieu of to lose altitude. Again, we'll identify Webex using the DME and hold until we're at a suitable altitude. More on VOR holds in a little bit. The other way we can get established is if ATC is giving us radar vectors. Let's say we're coming from the southeast on a heading perpendicular to the approach course. ATC will give us a turn to intercept at about a 30 degree angle, and we'll hold that until the needle comes in and we can turn onto the approach course. However we get established, we find ourselves at 2,000 feet approaching Wanpa, the final approach fix, identified by the Maltese cross on the profile view. We'll know we're at Wanpa when the DME reads 16.4. At that point, we can configure for the approach and we can descend to our MDA of 540 feet. The visual descent point is at 11.9 DME and is represented by the black V symbol on the approach plate. It's here from where we can make a normal descent to the runway and land. Some pilots choose to make this their decision point. If the runway isn't in sight, they'll decide to end in a missed approach. If we do go miss though, we won't execute it until reaching the missed approach point which is ZEP2, 10.5 DME. At that point, we'll start a straight out climb to 2100. The procedure calls for us to go direct to Waterloo. We're gonna do the parallel entry. We're watching for station passage with the needle deflecting and the flag flipping from to to from. We'll set up our parallel entry by starting our timer for one minute and maintaining our current 053 heading. At the end of the minute, we'll make a left turn around to intercept the inbound course. That course is 233, so we'll twist that on our OBS. For a 30 degree intercept, we'll turn to a heading of 203. 
We'll fly this until the needle centers track inbound, and when the flag flips from to to from, we'll have passed the station. At this point, we want to start our outbound turn. A standard rate turn to the outbound course of 053 should take one minute. Don't twist the OBS. Many of us will make the mistake of trying to track 053 now on the VOR. But remember that there's no radial to track on the outbound leg. We're just going back up for another trip down the inbound course. It's like kids lining up at a water park to go back down the big slide. We don't really care what the line to get back looks like. Now, we'll be a beam the station when the flag flips from from to to. At that point, we'll time one minute flying the outbound leg. At the end of that one minute, we'll make our turn back to the inbound course of 233, and the needle should come to center again. Now, let's say we're dealing with a wind out of the northeast here. It's going to be a direct tailwind flying the inbound course. So when we time this leg, it actually only takes 45 seconds. We want the inbound course to be one minute, ideally. So we'll adjust by flying a longer outbound leg. We'll do the outbound turn as normal and then add an extra 15 seconds to the outbound leg. When we do our inbound turn as normal and intercept the needle, that extra space should allow us to fly a one minute inbound leg. There's also considerations for correcting for crosswinds in a holding pattern, which we'll touch on in another video. But this is the full VOR holding pattern that scares a lot of us IFR pilots and is what makes these procedures a challenge. But take a moment to see each of these legs flown out and try it out for yourself in the simulator or aircraft until it makes a bit more sense.